All right, today we are making an offline section of the toolbox. Now I've been kind of working on this little side project using all C sharp. I haven't really approached it in the last month, but as more people have donated to the open source project of the whole Windows utility, I wanted to make a special offline one that uses .NET Framework with C Sharp that does all the same tweaks. Mainly just for those that donated, they have just something they could run on a new system and just it would automatically set everything up for them and then just have it done. And I'm going to just copy over the tweaks exactly as they were over there. A couple new things I'm going to try out in this one. I got accepted into GitHub Copilot X with chat support. So this is like chat GPT baked in chat GPT four, I believe. So we should be able to do a whole bunch of function writing directly in VS code. So that's going to be an interesting tidbit looking at um, these things. So getting that going, uh, we'll try it out. Usually AI stuff does a terrible job, but in this instance, we, we can give it a whirl. Uh, the other things, uh, we, we'll see how much time we have, but I think that's going to be the main priority for today's live stream. We're going to see how far we get. Uh, the main program, everything's broken out into more functional sections here. So we should see these things. Anytime I do a new function, typically I call it from a CS file. Uh, so everything is pretty much done. I know the, the services section is pretty good. We might double check that with the official tweaks utility. Um, I know the registry, we still need to set that up. That's probably going to be a bulk of today's live stream. And, um, we'll, we'll go through and just see exactly where we're at with that. Uh, and then services we've done already task scheduler is something we've already set up, but we need to go through with like a fine tooth comb, disable some of those nasty tasks that get enabled by default. And I think that's pretty much it. So it, it's going to be an interesting one for sure. Uh, I'll pull up chat here too and see how we're doing. So this should get everything nice and nice and pretty for us. So we'll have chat up. So if you're familiar with C Sharp, you can help out uh, or just make fun of me and my noob skills at coding as I haven't coded since the late 90s. Started getting back into it a little bit, but with the renaissance of AI, it should help me out a little bit and also kind of just expand things. Man, looking forward to it. Should be should be a fun time all around. I think we'll start in on the registry portion right here. The last uh, registry commit we've done, if we look, we were working on system responsiveness, uh, responsiveness and network throttling, I believe, for gaming tweaks. I don't like a lot of gaming tweaks with my windows because a lot of times I feel like it's outdated knowledge and I don't know how relevant it is to a lot of modern gaming. Um, but we'll take a look here. Uh, our actual tweaks file is over here and this has been kind of going. Now, if I was a smart man, I would modify the program CS to take inputs from the tweaks.json file. And that way, if someone did want to modify the offline portion of this, they could easily do it without having to recompile. So let's, let's start asking GPT or, or Copilot here. What does that look like? Um, how do we, how do we ask? Let's see, explain, fix, help, test, explain how select Selection selected code works. Propose a fix for problems in the selected code. Generate help. Generate unit tests. Ask VS Code. Oh, I think fix. Um, let's just highlight this, and we'll go fix. Propose a fix. Uh, pull values from tweaks.json instead. Uh, we'll just put that, see what that's, is it smart enough to pull my other files? Um, Ooh, that's kind of sexy. Oh, define a class to hold the data value in JSON, read the JSON file from tweaks dot JSON. 
damn, would that work? I feel like we need to set this up because one, importing all the tweaks from the toolbox into like just hard coding into the code. One, that's monotonous and who wants to watch that? And two, I don't want to maintain two code bases here. That would just suck. I mean, I'm kind of maintaining two code bases, but I'd much rather keep the tweaks universally there and update it one spot. So I just pull in the same JSON file and it does the same tweaks no matter what. That's where the magic is. So what does that look like? Registry tweaks, registry value. Ooh. All right, I feel like that's what we're gonna do. Let's grab these guys. What do we have up here for that? Oh man, that is gonna be interesting. So really just grabbing this JSON should be good. We'll just add that right up here. And then for this guy, we've already started doing this section. Hmm, can we do like a, I don't know if that's a valid comment in C sharp, but we're gonna just comment that out and then we'll come back to it. We're gonna define this. Let's grab our code here. And then we're gonna look at JSON. This is already airing. And what we're gonna take is we're gonna take this JSON. Let's save it as, let's come back into win one shot, my project. We'll toss it into here. Now with that in there, does it still read that file? Um, I don't think that would work necessarily. Same directory as the executable. Let's look at the actual file. What does the structure look like when we're building this? Um, let's go to GitHub, win one shot. My project, I believe, no, the tweaks JSON is in the wrong spot. So when it builds it, I bet it puts in bin debug. Where is it putting this? Like a fish out of water here. My project DXE. I don't feel like that would be it. Objects, no, okay. Hmm. Yeah, let's see. We could probably ask it to massage it a little bit, but I don't think this program is actually making the call. So if we look, um, let's go win one shot. And if we look here, I don't think there's any. Yeah, we're already up to date. And if we look at the status, we do have some build that we haven't committed back, but uh, that's just changes we made, the tweaks.json and program.cs. Now, dot, .net run, I believe, is enough to run it. Could not find a project to run. Well, it'd help if we were in the project section, isn't it? We look at here, there's the tweaks. And if we go .NET run, should do all our tweaks. Now we're still running into an error specifically over what we just added with a failure to build. Um, top level statements must precede namespace. What happens if we just copy it? Can it be this simple? Let's see. Let's see if it can detect kind of like that. Oh, okay. The error message indicates that top level statements in your program should come for any namespace or type declarations. Here's an update of your code that should resolve the issue. So how does it differ? We have our public class right here. We have our list registry tweaks, and then we loop, and then the namespace right here. Now, if we look, we're calling namespace registry manager, I believe. Let's see, how are we calling that? We look at the files. Some of this just like reorienting myself to this project, so it's been a little bit. So registry.cs, is this a namespace? It's just a public class, not necessarily a namespace. I don't know what the difference is. Um, hmm, dang. How am I going to call that? Let's see if uh, Copilot can tell me. 
yeah looking at our chat here can we call our public registry manager class right let's let's just see services let's see what do we have what do we call this so public class registry manager can we call our public registry manager class uh, a little bit backwards let's i don't want to confuse chat gpt here or copilot i should say i don't know if there's a difference between gpt and copilot so far copilot's looking pretty good instead of namespace i don't know if that makes any sense no you cannot call public class registry manager instead of namespace okay but why a namespace is a way to organize code and avoid naming conflicts which is a class of blueprint and creating objects in c sharp and namespace is a container for classes interference structs enums and delegates used for that okay it's it's this is really neat because it's kind of teaching me c sharp and things to do and not that i can't do near code is a class that contains a static change key you can place this class inside a namespace and organize your code and avoid naming conflicts here's an example so i would wrap that namespace with that and then call it with my namespace registry change key okay hmm uh, so namespace registry change and then just we just come to the end i know i gotta fix the code there but all right registry change registry manager change registry key i hate those variables i know that's super duper hacky i'm just seeing if maybe i could just change that bit around and then if we look at our past one where they're like here's how to change it we would call change registry key okay okay so that's where we would change this so instead of doing it here we would go registry change dot registry manager change registry key now reading these files is still problematic right find all text so what's wrong with that yeah a lot of people in chat are talking about Waylon being faster than xorg i think that's a load of honky let's see if we can open session editor oh can i add another one let's say explain or so this is just explain code, fix code, help, tests, questions about VS code, clear. So you really can't, in that regard, ask it questions like GPT. It's really meant for just direct. Top level must precede namespace and type declarations. What's the quick fix? That's cool. Let's see if Copilot can give us a fix. It's still gonna spit out that, isn't it? Huh. Putting these declarations uh, would be dumb. There's the namespace. There's the registry tweak. Whale. Uh, discard. I don't think that's very helpful. Ask chat GPT 3.5 or 4. Let's see. You could ask Bard too. Bard's terrible though. Google Bard is just straight up dog, dog poo, man. All the way. <laughs> it is bad. So let's just take a couple lines here. Change the following c sharp lines to pull these values from tweaks.json 
and then put those in. Well, that's a whole different way of doing it, isn't it? So we have class registry manager. Let's come back to here. Let's go to registry again. I'm just going to remove this namespace. Let's just get rid of it. Um, ah. So public class registry manager. Let's come back to here. Have it right there. This copilot code is not working for us. For each tweak and tweaks, blah, blah, blah. Let's just delete it. Let's try old GPT out and see if we got anything better. So class registry manager, which we've already defined that over here. You can see public class registry manager. So we don't need that bit of code. So all this doesn't need to be there. Here is where the magic happens. So class program static main define JSON. I am seeing a new library up there. JSON L I N Q. We need a might might need to look at that so I feel like doing that section uh, let's fix our formatting a little bit we'll define the tweaks.json you can see this could not be found that's probably because we're missing that library so let's let's pull in that extra json library from gpt and then maybe we can get to a spot if we can get the code close enough i think we could ask copilot to assist us in fixing the code so with that done let's see if that now yeah that fixed that so now that object's able to be recognized it's going to parse the json text retrieve the values from the json object and ooh. all right registry key path the next one would be oof not quite what we want but some of it is D word. Some of it's probably going to be string and then log file path. Okay. Uh, I stopped paying for GPT. <laughs> I, I wanted to substitute out Copilot for it. As we see so far, GPT looks to be still a bit better. Um, Int enable, oh, I hate that. Let's see if we can't retrieve values. What's the values we're pulling in? So if we look at our rules here, we have original value, name, path. So that's gonna be name. Let's see if we can't open up a new chat. We're gonna go fix, use code to implement a function in C sharp to parse the values. Let's try to work the other way now from the JSON to the C sharp and see if we can't learn enough. Oh, well, that's interesting. So parsing the values looks to be just a public class. Why is it a number instead of an integer? Let's see value could be a problem as an integer instead of a string. It's a good point. It's a good point, Bev. Uh, I mean, it's, it could work. String object, string object. I like it. We just changed that int value to a string, I believe. Let's see what that looks like for the value though. Is it usually an integer? The value actually looks to be almost always an integer. So I think that's why it did that. Except for here, you see how it says consent store location, value deny, reg value kind string. That's gonna be a problem with this kind of, let's try to fix it. Let's say, what about the values that are strings? Okay, you to that you can use to string method to convert them to C sharp strings. Here's an updated function. I don't think that'll work. All right, let's take the parse value. Let's come back to tweaks uh, program. So this is what we have right now. This is the GPT equivalent. And if we paste in this, 
parse value. Obviously, we can't do it right here, but I feel like we could do like a parse CS file probably, and it should add. Let's just go parse.cs. Let's toss that here. Parse values, public, void. Um, I think we need to add something else here and then also the libraries. So if we look here, it's a little J, but that's okay. So let's just grab that. That should clear up some of it. Oh, we're still having public is not valid for this item. And if we look at these other values, like static pool, public class, I think we can just good public class and not the void right to return the proper value but language version 12 or greater what the hell does that mean yeah yeah the whole idea of this program is just so you could take it on a fresh system without an internet connection and just run it and then it would take the tweaks.json that the regular online PowerShell toolbox does and then just parse the whole thing. And the better part is it not going to rely on PowerShell at all. The problem with the toolbox right now, I have an executable for it, but it's just a wrapper for PowerShell. And the main issue with that is any script that launches PowerShell through an executable gets flagged as a virus. So that's a huge issue. And something I would like to fix for those that do donate and want an executable, I want to give them a good executable that could just grab everything from the open source project and then execute it. I think it'd be cool. So that's the whole premise of this exercise. I know it feels like we're rebuilding the wheel here, especially using .NET libraries and C Sharp instead of just PowerShell, which obviously I'm much more familiar with PowerShell, but that's the idea. <sighs> so that's not gonna quite work here hmm. we don't necessarily need to make a new class either like the parse cs right here i don't know why it's feature primary constructors is not available in c sharp 11 please use language 12 or greater what? I have no idea on that. what's the quick fix fix you fix it copilot let's see what it does it does that okay except huh okay let's let's just let's see what happens fix it let's just have ai do it all for us okay still didn't fix it all right fix it ah okay so in this instance let's just take all of this um all of this code can we just right click and say copilot fix Okay, let's accept. What in the F is that? What's with the question marks? I mean, VS Code's no longer giving me an error. Uh, let's fix the close brackets. Oh, what a great AI. I mean, it's technically not. <laughs> That's so not going to work. That's terrible. Right? I don't know if anybody can do C Sharp in, in the chat, but that that ain't it let me change uh let's let's see if we can't get some coders in here from twitch i, th I feel like twitch humans would be far better than uh far better than chat gpt right here let's change where we're at we're in science and technology right now let's let's switch over to programming is that a category programming basic um no uh what is it? Uh, software development, maybe? Ah, there we go. Software and game development. Yeah, let, let's just see. I feel like someone... Uh, question means nullable, I think. All right. Let's see if we can't entice some, some C-sharp devs in here to figure out what in the hell I'm doing with this. <laughs> Chat GPT has never been wrong before. Ooh, yeah. That is so wonky. But... Let's see if, and when we go to tweaks, pull values from tweaks JSON. See, I feel like this would make more sense, but uh, let's 
clear it. All right. How should we approach this? Uh, Twitch chat has been way better. When we were developing this tool the first time, we could get, like, chat GPT gives a good outline of stuff and kind of structures it. And usually we can kind of poke around and get something semi-functional. But Twitch chat has been immensely helpful, like way more helpful. There was a couple people, I think the last time we did this, uh, one was a C-sharp developer of like 10 plus years. He came into chat and was just explaining it all. And it was way easier to fix stuff using an actual human. So yeah, no, the AI overlords aren't gonna overtake us anytime soon. And most times me as just a complete beginner uh, coding can usually see, hey, that's not going to work. Like when we look at like parse.cs, VS Code likes this, but come on, we know this. We know this isn't going to work. That that it looks just complete bonkers to me. Like why isn't it giving an error? And what's up with the question marks? Like gets a set of J token from a specific property name. I mean, maybe, but I don't know. Oh, man. Yeah, you'd probably want to parse that JSON into a struct if I had to guess. I would just say so. How do I do that? Um, let's ask ChatGPT. Fix parse code into a struct. Huh. String int value get parse values. Strange. How do I use parse values in my code? Okay, access the parse values with this. How to serialize parse value struct with JSON. Ah, kind of makes sense. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do on punished. So if the object is null, it won't call the function with the operator. So it's actually not wrong. Okay, so I looked at it and was like, that looks jank, but apparently not. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to mess around the Baz and team for a, it's going to be a little bit. I, I, I'm not quitting this project until I have a final product that people can actually use to parse this. Um, how long will it take me? A week, two weeks, three weeks? I don't know. Longer? <laughs> I still have a lot to learn. So we have the JSON fi file right here. We have this class, but someone said we need to do it as a struct. So public string path, original value. Can we do that? Probably need to put it in like a for loop, right? <laughs> JSON to C sharp. Okay, let's see. Somebody got me something. Convert JSON to C sharp classes online. Okay. So let's just take our JSON file. We'll just take our tweaks and let's just grab. We're not going to grab the whole file. We're just going to take this and see what it, it spits out. So there's that convert value value D word D word. Did I grab anything? I feel like we need a, a larger sample size because these were all D words. Let's see if we can't find, let's just grab all of this. Because sometimes we're gonna have a string or a key probably. There's a string there and there's a string, a couple strings, not, not very many, but still it's enough. So let's take this. What happens when we paste all of that? Convert string, okay, great. Yeah, that's actually not any different than, than before, but that's not a huge deal. It's only a couple, a couple values in there. And we could do like a convert to string for those and just call them out prior to and just copy paste. Well, the whole JSON has like invoke scripts and some things we won't use that we need to ignore. Now, I know some people are like, we'll just get a clean JSON file and then do it. I don't necessarily want to do that because I want to use the exact same JSON file from the open source project on this closed source binary, if that makes sense. So then no matter what happens, the tweaks would be universal. So whatever happens in 
PowerShell will happen when we run the C-sharp program. I know that adds a level of complexity, but I don't know. I'm here for it. And if we do the whole thing, let's let's just do the whole thing just to see what it spits out. Convert. Okay. Root. How strange. So that's an invoke script. Tweaks location. Remove Cortana. That's kind of neat, though. I dig that. Get and set. I'm just... Hmm. Copy all to clipboard. Let's see. What does that look like? Here, I'm going to just erase all this real fast. Let's paste that in. Not used, probably, right? Now... I believe we could put that question mark from earlier, that thing we learned. That might work. All right, get and set are defined, are generating the get attribute, get to attribute value function for a class object since they should be private attribute. Okay. So this would be the class attribute and where's the parsing happening? Is the parsing even happening here? No. So really, if we look at the parse, we get the that instead of parse value string JSON, I think we can just throw this right here. Okay. And where are we pulling that in from? Parse values. Jeez. Okay. I need to think about this. Thanks, Star. I try, I try to keep learning, man. I always try and challenge myself, get out of my comfort zone. I'm way outside my comfort zone on this. Well, let's clear this out. So we did a JSON to C sharp. It spit out all these public classes that should be able to parse the inside of the JSON. Um, and if we just highlight all code and say fix, parse, tweaks, dot json values in tweaks dot json let's see what it does all right can you provide me with the structure of the tweaks to say on what values you want to parse okay let's see i don't know if it'll accept all of this but let's try oh no <laughs> um access functions great getter and set get sets for encapsulation yeah i so how these are all public public class public make them nullable use nullable types convert how's that change things for us does it change anything i don't think it really changed much looks very very close yeah, right now everything's set to public for these this which would probably be problematic with this structure. Ah, damn it. Come on. I think Chris. It's the best way to approach this. This looks just way too dirty. Um argh. what would it what would be a better way? Let me try and approach it from a different angle. I would love to use something like this, but let's just try to it's too much right now it's too much for my brain i can't handle all these different aspects let's create a basic json using just a couple values just as a test and then we'll figure out how to do the rest so let's let's just clear this out we're going to start over again and let's just delete this and what we're going to do, delete parse, because this does work. All, I've already tested the code. It's just instead of feeding all this, I want to pull it from JSON. So let's look at tweaks.json. Let's just grab a couple values here. So... Let's just grab this. We're going to create a new file. Test. 
dot json let's, let's get this a little bit smaller so let's um, close that down what else do we need and then a closing bracket should do it end of file json what's the end of file look like for a json let's go end of file um that should work so for test of json oh let's go over here uh do we need one more closing bracket huh no that did not work why all right so oh that's right that's right we do need an opening you're, you're correct so if we look at the home yes you're absolutely correct for json we do need an opening bracket that's what we're missing thank you again twitch chat way better than any ai driven thing all right so that is a valid json structure we got scheduled tasks that we can pull in we have a couple registries obviously nothing crazy but i just wanted a, a sample test json without all the extra crap because I, I once we pull in all that extra garbage that we gotta we gotta be able to sift through it and then throw it out i just wanted two basic structures on json so we can go okay this is what it's pulling in and then we structure everything and just as a good test so our test data is pretty clean pretty minimal and then we come back to here and then we pull it in so now that we've done that we have a couple on the program side of things we do have this json linq and regular json and we've used gpt hell let's try bard and see what it does it's been a while let's pull in a third ai here let's take um probably parse parse tweaks dot json into a c sharp function all right i'm gonna try those two Convert JSON to string in object in C sharp. Thank you guys. I'm gonna check those out too. Action. Now, in my experience, Bard's been the absolute worst. And okay. What do y'all think of that code? So you have this function for parse tweaks JSON. And then from the main program, we could do a list tweak. I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah, I can paste bin it unpunished. Let me uh, let me do that. This is a good little test. Let's copy it. Um, probably the fastest way actually is ixio. Ix.io um, test. Oh, uh, do I not have ix test? If you ever use ixio, it's pretty cool. Way better than paste bin so yeah there we go here you go bam yeah i actually oh i i created an alias in my powershell script so if you ever want any code from me and you're seeing what i, I want to see exactly what i'm doing or you want like a snippet from my code just ask in chat and then i just pull up powershell and then i just say ix and then i feed whatever file you want and then it just spits it out into a url format Pretty powerful stuff. Uh, I mainly use this in Linux, but obviously we can also do it in Windows. And man, it's great for collaboration. So if you're ever doing public coding, like I said, I, I, I'm such a such an advocate for for just completely open uh, up on on just being able to submit stuff like that. So. This is no good. I'm gonna read up on these functions. All right. I just need a, I just need more knowledge. How to serialize and deserialize JSON in .NET. All right. This article shows how to use system.txt JSON namespace to serialize and deserialize objects. If you're porting existing code from new on JSON, then use okay so we're using this older version but this official microsoft documents wants you to use this library instead 
or maybe it's not called libraries. It's just what I'm thinking for what you declare at the start. So system text JSON is actually what they're asking for. Yeah, I know. Rickroll Odor <laughs> for for the ix.io library dependency. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I am calling it the right way, right thing. How about that? Even a clock's right twice a day. Broken, a broken clock's right twice a day. All right, so public int get cells temperature string comma variants of it namespaces. So we are very very close. How to rate .NET objects as JSON serialize? Okay. So the following example creates JSON as a string. So we have the weather forecast. We're only having one library dependency up here. We're pulling the public class weather forecast. Then we have another a new class program main. This is like what we have for program CS setting variable weather forecast to weather forecast. It's kind of weird. I, I need to look up like camel case and the proper proper way of doing things. And you're specifying that as probably the JSON object, I would imagine. So weather forecast would be that. And then you're going JSON string, JSON serializer, serialize weather forecast. So how do you do that as a file? So this would be our entire file right here. So we would specify that variable into there and it'd be you know what weather forecast would be our entire test so then and if i'm saying something wrong please correct me i'm just trying to think out loud of exactly how i'm gonna do this string json uh, json string serialize that so then it should specify like date equals this parse temperature celsius equals 25 summer equals hot so on and so forth yeah agreed create a new object and then serialize it to json so here's serialized to file we need to serialize from file though this just writes out a json file okay you have getters and setters on the for forecast this can be used to set part of the constructor the newing of the object we got about half that all right do we have a from example instead of a to example? All right, that's just writing out JSON again. So it'd probably be deser. Okay, read from JSON as dot deserialize. That's what we need. So we have the get set for the weather forecast. We have the high temps, and then we have the JSON string. Yeah. So this would. How do we set the one thing I don't know? is how to set the JSON string equivalent to the file, because this is the entire file, like test.json uh, that we set up. So this string would need to be set to that file. And then we deserialize it into weather forecast in this instance. And then we could write out the variables weather forecast question dot date. So it would pull in this value and then temperature Celsius would pull in this value and then summary would pull in this value. Okay. That's simple enough. Oh, the next example is read from a file. Okay. Ah, well, thank you. <laughs> um, still good. I like reading all of it just so I get a little bit more base knowledge because who knows when I'm going to have to come back to this. All right. So I think at this point we deserialize from file, but the thing I don't know, what's the difference between synchronous code and asynchronous code? I have no idea what that is. So here's public status async. Here's this. I would imagine we, we go with synchronous code, but I don't know the difference between the two codes, code examples. Obviously, is this one's a public static async task main, um, but yeah. All right, uh, we got unpunished gave us a one from us. Okay, we got public class root. 
this is just the root value public class WPF essential tweaks tally and then it would have those things okay a couple things I don't know is like the root here ah uh, I got you asyncs paralyzed yeah whenever I did run spaces in um PowerShell that was a big mind f which uses async um so yeah let's let's just stick with sync for now no need to complicate when i can't get the basics down yeah it's one thing like knowing how to code something and another thing how to explain it i think that's true with everything like a lot of people when i when i'm doing videos on youtube a lot of people i'll, I'll maybe make a video and maybe i don't do a great job explaining it but sometimes it's way easier just to show someone than than actually trying to teach someone or explain it especially via chat that would be that would be very difficult so so this would be where we're pulling this in public class program and when we look back here so here's our program cs this is like where our, all of it lives but this is not doing anything here except for pulling and calling other stuff so i'm not really doing anything for the main where if you look at like registry.cs this is where i do all the magic kind of happens for actually setting the values and doing that type of thing root class is just the whole json object okay create a new all right let's create a new project um let's just go all right let's see if i can create a new project i think i created this project in vs studio and then ported it to code okay let's go back um create new project dot net can we do a dot net create project let's see i don't even know how to create a new dot net project create new project cli is it just dot net new net new template so i think we could just go dot net new test json okay no templates for that can dot net new console okay do can i name the yeah look at that can i name the project so we got output could i do like output json test or test json to name the project so it doesn't create like another my project what's the syntax for that dot net creates new or dot net new console syntax so output output directory project path name so dash in and o would be good and we also got dash h let's let's pull in a help context so here's that so if we go dash new test json output locate this is where we could do a uh, specific directory i believe and i want to say we'd want to do like a i think yeah defaults 7.0 so we don't need to specify a framework so let's do output test json so that creates us a new CS project. And if we look back here, so we have this is our old project. Now we have test JSON. Great. So let's take our test file right here. We're going to just cut that. Just paste it right there. Yes. So we have our test JSON file. We got our new console. We'll just kill all that. Let's grab that paste bin from here. Let's see if we can better understand this. I'm just going to go raw code, grab all of it, paste it into here. Now, obviously we are missing dependencies, right? Maybe. Yeah, it might be included in, in .NET. Okay. So from our program CS, I went ahead and copy and pasted a uh, unpunished example for me that grabs this test JSON file right here. Yeah, I probably would do that, right? Using system.text.json. 
and then probably also another using serialization yeah i feel like that would probably be needed yeah um that makes sense to me so then we have our classes we're specifying the root class which this would be set via here then schedule task and then schedule class.name so then we need to reference those objects let's just do basic writes uh just like a probably like an output console console write i think is what that is so in here how do we read so we have that for tele tweaks but let's dive deeper let's say we want to grab scheduled task name and output that so let's go console right line schedule tap okay that's a little eerie right like uh, is it listening to me that's weird out of all the classes it just grabbed is the one i said out loud okay did it even grab the name schedule task so we have that but can we dive deeper and like drill down into like name <laughs> i mean um wow uh let's try to write those out i'm kind of curious to see what what that would be so it'll grab the file name it'll go json string file name read all in that file name then it'll deserialize that json and then we're grabbing that file no you have to get the number from the task list okay how do I get that? Because you have several tasks. Let's see. Uh, everything looks pretty good on my side here, guys. Uh, let's see. Look. Yeah, bitrate's solid. All right. Hmm. Schedule zero. Oh, so it's like the index number. That's what you mean by number from the task list. So name would be zero. State would be one. Original state would be two. Or... Is it just because, like, if there's another scheduled task, it'd be like zero. Hmm. We grab the name from the first task. So instead of this, it'd be scheduled task dash zero, you said? Zero? Like that? Ah, come on, get out of your file. You have to list tasks, so you need to give a specific index. So the index would be zero. So state would be... So if I wanted to pull this value from scheduled task, would it be state, or it would be scheduled task index one, right? For the second one, and then dot state. So let's run this, just see what pops up. Um, I'm kind of curious. So let's just do a dot net run. Okay, lots of errors. Write to Linux. Oh. <laughs> Write line, maybe. <laughs> okay yeah this is why you don't just blanket except the uh, uh predefined thing right linux what damn copilot get off the drugs okay oh it would be scheduled task zero okay point to first task oh okay so if i was doing stuff in like parallel or something like that it would need to be wouldn't that be asynchronous then but um let's not get too far ahead of myself Let's try to run this. I don't think that'll work. You will it? Oh. Okay. Now the warnings, I, I guess I could just ignore, but original value contains a non-null value when existing constrictor. I wonder what that is on those warnings. And to clean up that value too, so it's, it's spitting out for the value, scheduled task. Ah, okay. I see. So let's say I only wanted to do that value. I would just simply change that. So this is being added to it. This is plain text. This is actually pulling from the JSON value. Okay. So if I do string, um, let's see, string question everywhere. So the string value doesn't, all right, let's let's see if we can't make a GPT do some work here. 
Let's go. We got string value, string value. Let's see. There. But right here, I do see stuff. So let's just... All right, let's see if it actually can fix something. Now that I know what I want it to do, let's fix, um, fix strings to do nullable. Ah, I don't know. That's the right terminology. Non-nullable. So non-nullable to be nullable. To be nullable. Cool. Merge that. Ah, oh, I was about to say, come on, that'd be cool. I guess copy. What happens if I do that? Ah, oh, yeah. There we go. All right. Uh, did add an extra. That's okay. So then let's run it again. Dot net run. No. Well, still got a couple. But what are we grabbing from that is non-nullable? That's the ones above it, which is... Essential tweaks tally, registry, and schedule task. Essential tweaks tally, registry, and this. So these lists, registry, can you do just like, would it be right here? Or would it be after this? No, that's a class. So I think we can just do that public after that is so interesting okay it's after sorry yeah just initialize the list is that's it's easier okay or inside like registry oh, okay does it matter let's see so we have this class can you just do that right there it's kind of blowing my mind right now all right so we have that now we have to dereference of a possible no i know we we don't necessarily need to clean up warnings but i i'd like to when i learn something actually learn it correctly <laughs> so we, i'm not just spitting out a ton of uh warnings on my code so cool i think you can initialize as part of the initialization public list class oh equals new schedule list just initialize the list that way so here's our list, and if you look right here, we're only getting two warnings, and that's probably those list definitions we talked about. And instead of doing this, we do public list schedule task, but instead of doing this get set command, we need to initialize them by doing an equal new list schedule task like that so if we do that the same thing over here new list registry bam now the warnings are on the right lines you can keep that get set oh i can keep the get set oh do i need to keep it so interesting most likely and let's error it let's break it all right, so if we run this, index was out of range. Must be non-negative. Hmm, interesting. All right, anyways, so let's switch these back. So we have these get set. You said not there. We want to make these nullable. What if we uh, switch around the order of the question um, for the, making them to be nullable? So if... It's like that. What what does that look like? Yeah, okay. So now we have the non nullable by back. So it does matter on the positioning of that. Good to know. So the differences between the warnings are, are now we should only have the two warnings for the D reference. And this is from program CS 39 and 49. So if you look, 39 and 49. Well, 49 is not on here, but. Uh, it's character space 49. So, where's that? 49 would be right here. So, this is where it's. This is where it's all going wrong. D reference of possible null reference. So, how do you dereference a possible null reference? 
if you put a a bang sign before every dot it should work and after the whole thing also really and after the whole thing like that oh that feels weird that feels super weird but so the bang sign dereferences the non-null possibly let's see so close uh but not quite and now we're down to one error or one warning i should say not an error so why does it why does it like this one but it doesn't like this one is it possibly because of this array value right here and if we look at the warning let's let's just ask ai about it dereference a possible null reference so let's say we grab this and let's take this and let's just go fix how does it want to do it so instead of the bang it wants to do oh it wants to use a conditional operator the question mark instead of bang what's the difference between bang and, and uh, question mark now obviously to fix this value we could probably just do this and this would get rid of our warning but i'm just thinking so yeah that that cleared up all our warnings why what's the difference between the two oh question will stop execution i think okay so the difference let's see can we ask what is the difference between question mark and bang let's see okay <clears throat> Question marks and bang operators are used to handle null values in C-sharp. The question mark or operator called null conditional operator is used to check if the object is null before accessing its properties or methods. If the object is null, the expression returns null instead of throwing a null reference exception. The bang operator is called null forgiving operator and is used to tell the compiler that you are sure that the object is not null even, if, even though it might be nullable. Their operator is used to suppress compiler warnings about null values. In the code you provided, the bang operator is used to tell the compiler that the objects are not null, even though they might be nullable. This can be dangerous. The objects are actually null as a result in the null reference operator at the end of the runtime. The question operator should be used instead to handle the null values safely. Okay, cool. So question is safe. I mean, they're both technically right. But well, apparently you should be using question marks instead. So, um, all right, uh, GitHub Copilot, let's uh, fix this. Uh, change rank to question mark. Yep, accept. Thanks. All right. Except now I think it screwed it up because I think it should have added a question mark at the end, right? Yeah, let's see. Ah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, line 36, character 25. So if we go line 36, 25, what? I feel like just doing this would be enough, right? I feel like that just... What did I miss? This is what you get for blindly accepting AI chat GPT. Oh, I don't need a question mark at the end. Okay question though is looking at this it's spitting out converting null literal impossible null value to a non-null type non-nullable type so now at line 36 it's given us kind of the same i guess i'm learning something about nullable today so this one right here how do i fix that i, I imagine i add a question mark but do I, I add it after the json string or do I add it? Yeah. I mean, if I was I'm guessing, man, I imagine that would be it, right? Yeah, oh, no, you're right. It's root. So it'd be root question. It would be over here. Durr. So stupid of me. Handling nulls is an art of its own. As I'm learning. As I'm learning here. Very interesting. So now that should get rid of that warning. Or just error completely out um line 36 now it does not like that okay so wait is it, it should be root question mark right here right 
class root local variable hmm root root yeah 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 I feel like that's right yes now we're perfect very intriguing okay so now we can get values um that makes a lot of sense so I feel like we grabbed the entire tweaks.json, spit that out again. Now that we got a good idea of an example of what it should look like, just need to make sure I remember. Man, I need to bookmark that website you guys gave me. Uh, JSON to csharp.com. Let's bookmark that and toss that into projects. You will come in handy. Now, if we look at these, what it's spitting out now that we kind of have a better understanding, these lists and that, we look back to here, we'll need to go through and add the non null, uh, no, make it nullable, right? Is that, that's what we did. Right. Yeah, fix strings to be nullable. So we want to make sure there can be nullable, meaning if we don't have a value there, it can be null. And it'll properly handle them. Super neat. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you need the user agent switcher I'm using uh, to switch uh, to do like Bing chat, uh, this one is it's called user agent switcher and manager. And it has this little guy with a little, you know, incognito mode looking thing. Very, very good. Um, let me see. Manage extension. Give me a web page. I'll just copy it in there. URL for you. Uh, extension website. Yeah. Here you go. It's a great little tool. If you ever need to say you're a certain browser, that's what I use. Okay. So now let's apply our knowledge that we learned on this test project. So coming back into our program CS. So we're pulling in all this other stuff. Um, I feel like we could. Okay. What is this down here? Oh, that's right. That's a, a neat thing we use to unpin everything from the start menu. This is debloating apps, which actually I, I kind of want to hard code those in because the script PowerShell scripts, like getting rid of apps through like uh, unprovisioning or, or removing them from like remove app apex. It's not very reliable. And I like this way a lot better. Resolving nullable warnings. Okay, I'll leave that up. Come back to it. All right. I feel like we got really good, really good beat on stuff. I learned something about nullable warnings today, which is great. Let's see if we can make some magic happen here. Hmm. How do I want to approach this? So we have our services up here, log file, and we no longer really using that. If we look at this uh, test JSON up here, we should be using this one as the one that the AI was giving us for the functions that, that those libraries were deprecated, right? Or really no longer use. You should be using the system text JSON instead. And then we're specifying our classes here. How do I want to do that? If we look on this one, let's close that out close that out so if we're using nullable types shouldn't that shouldn't that give like a question mark right there in front of strings i mean you think but alas it did not mm. so we'll have to fix that probably immutable classes uh more more homework for me because i don't know what that is uh use record types okay create ready use classes Use nullable types. Yes. So, come on. Maybe I need to refresh. Let's just do a refresh. And then we'll say use nullable types. Paste it all in. Let's grab our tweaks JSON. And then just say, give me nullable types. 
Yeah, still didn't do it. Yeah, well, that's okay. Oh, immutable just means you can't change values. Ah, easy enough. You might just need to do a full JSON to JSON C sharp and do the same. Yeah, I think so. Newton soft is third party where JSON text JSON ah, system J text JSON is on in the box. Cool. So we're going to grab all of this. Then we need to make all these nullable. So we're going to take this portion. This is tweaks.json right here. We're just going to add all that up here at the top. All right. It's going to freak out on me, which is fine. And getting close. Probably a faster way to do that. Um, I, oh crap, I forgot to tell you guys too. I've been working a lot on my NeoVim. Now, obviously with C-sharp, I'm not going to be using NeoVim a whole bunch, but I've got this new thing. So one of the creators of NeoVim created this awesome GitHub project called, um, I think it's like Fresh Start or, or Fast Start or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was. Anyways, it's a great base and I was able to import my configuration right on top of that project. And now my v Neo Vim just, oh, it's so epic. Ah, oh, it's so good. I got to do an update video on my Neo Vim. I know nobody watches those videos either, but man, I love Neo Vim. And it's, I just fell in love last night when I got that working. Kickstart, yes, kickstart. That was what it was. Thank you, Wall. Dude, and I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. If you're if you were creating your next first Neo Vim project, the, the one of the creators of NeoVim made that in that kickstart project oh it's 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 game changing everyone that start they should just bundle it in the box because damn was it nice all right let's go fix uh we'll fix this oh it's gonna be too much isn't it oh all right fine uh da, 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 da. Can we do a global replace maybe? I think maybe if we just do this list registry, list string, that should take care of a lot of them. So let's say we do this. Copy, paste. Oh, shoot, no. Take that. All right. Um, let's just replace those 20 objects. And we're gonna take this guy. Copy. Take that guy in. Paste it, replace, all right. And then there's some other values we need to make a, a tweak to. Now, I'm wondering, all right, let's do this guy too. Some of these are the same value, right? Oh, okay, troubleshoot. Oh, that's cool, yeah, I saw, uh, I think, Barnacles also gave me a shout on uh, Twitter about the debloat script. Just keep working on it. Got to get better. You have to put the classes in a new file or at the end of program.cs. Ah, uh, thank you, Cass. Let me fix this real fast. And then I will do exactly that. Copy H. We're just going to toss this right here. Okay. I feel like that's almost all of them, right? I hate doing global replaces like that, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Um, I think we're going to put this all in a new file, though, much like Cass said, uh, mainly because I kind of want to change a lot of these values and such. So let's take these and we're going to call a parses. We're going to just do like parse.cs, I think. So we'll just go parse.cs. Let's drop that into here like so so this should grab all of that uh-huh and this is the non-nullable problem so if we go public string this is one where we can just i hate doing it this way but it does work so that would fix all the nullables oop not all of them um this this is where i think that's a small enough chunk we could use copilot fix this Maybe Shit. doing a go. Oh, let's see. We might have we might have crashed Copilot. I'm actually kind of worried it's going to change something else too. But 
let's see. Yeah, I went ahead and created a new file totally. 100% unpunished. No reason to bloat that program.cs file up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate the shout out there, Odor. Uh, Copilot, uh, are you still there? I think Copilot died on us. Yeah, Copilot's a subscription. However, I have a lot of open source projects. And if you have, I think, over 10,000 stars on GitHub or something, it's like stars, downloads, and usage. I don't know exactly the metric it is, but it's a lot. But I have I have whatever metric it is, and they just give those uh, that maintain large open source projects free subscriptions. So all of uh, all of Cobilot's free for me. That's why I'm kind of using it. I would never pay for it though. It kind of sucks, as we've seen. Um. All right, that quickest way to do it. Um. Hmm. Ooh. I could show you guys my NeoVim and then we could we could make NeoVim do the change for us. Ah. Oh yeah, we could I guess regex would have worked too. I mean, I wanted to do my NeoVim, but that's fine. We can do that. Uh ta ta ta. All right, let's just take that. Uh uh uh. And we're just going to copy what we're going to do here is we're going to use GPT chat GPT. All right, chat GPT. What do I want you to do? I want to add a question mark after WPF star in the following code. Cheap. Uh, do it via regex. <laughs> okay so let's just do that so the regex pattern is that and then the copy is that easy so let's just go boop regex can we do a regex there ah oh, regex oh. all right um invalid regex loan quantifier what hmm. invalid regex apologies but here is the better one okay great thanks let's try that one don't always just copy paste regex but when i do <coughs> did that not work that didn't work either huh. all right try that again uh, regex for VS Code, yeah. Uh, regex for VS Code. Okay. Ah, shit, it didn't fix it. Come on! What? Invalid. Loan quantifier brackets. Yeah, NeoVim, this shit would have already gone. Hmm. Wait, what was there? Loan quantifier brackets. Uh, error. Loan quantifier brackets. Uh huh. Oh. Okay. So the regex pattern would be that. And then the replacement would be this. Okay. Did that work? Hmm. Now, oh, Visual Studio only. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, let's let's try. I wanted to show off my new NeoVim anyways. VS Code sucks. We all know it. I like hating on VS Code whenever I can. Now I need, I, I just did this commit last time. I, I only tried this in Linux. So we'll see if it's any good. Um, do, oh, I do have NeoVim. Okay. Git pull. Um, whoa. Wait, what? Okay, well, let's just remove NeoVim. Yeah, whatever. Come on. Really? Remove. I, I hate. Is it recurse? Uh, NeoVim. And recurse, I want to say. I, I, if it had proper auto. Uh, K. 
cannot be removed because it is not empty force. So stupid. PowerShell. Get your shit together, man. Okay. Um. Uh, let's do... Do we have GH? Oh, good. Repo. Clone. Chris. Titus. Tech. Neovim. Neovim. Do, 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 do. Vim when set up. What do we got? Neovim, Titus Kickstart. All right, so this uses the Kickstart project I found last night. I kind of did this, but let's see if it works. <sighs> Son of a biscuit eater. Okay, one second. Uh, when set up. When set up. Uh-huh. Uh, I think we can just do... I think... Ah, uh, uh, Stupid. Um, recurse force. All right, yank zero. V paste. Oh, all right, close enough. All right, so we got remove force. Blah blah blah. So now he uses this new format, and now we should be good. So we'll go win setup. All right, that's fine already exists so if grips already exist then some ah oh, shoot bah, all right um pseudo can we do that ah oh, that alias isn't working either fun no worries guys we're just uh running into some some windows-esque issues here which we're about to fix all right now we got admin now and set up there we go now let's vim show my new awesome setup hell yeah all right uh let's check some health then we're about to make this thing go um i think we should pull in c sharp 2 right we'll pull that language c lang in probably uh no parser for go do I have Go installed? I forget to look. Go? Card. Oh, no, I have Go installed. Eh, it might just be like a a Windows issue. Nah, let's just ignore it. It's fine for now. I still got to touch this up a little bit. We'll do some more massaging later. Ah, Windows being Windows. Um, It's kind of my fault, too. Using NeoVim and, like, PowerShell. Ah, I mean, it works, but... Man, it, it it feels a little wrong. Not gonna lie. Uh, all right. So let's quit this out. Now we pull it up. Ah, oh, so cool. So cool. All right. This is working. Let's just exit that. And we're gonna come back into my project. And we're gonna grab that. Was it parse? I think it was parse, right? CS. Yeah, so we are going to do a substitute, make this thing work. All right, um, let's just grab this bit, copy. Let's just trash this whole thing. Start GPT off fresh again. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, regex this in Vim command. Kabam. That looks good to me. All right. Bam. All right. Oh, shucks. Oops. Exclude public class, maybe. Um, ooh. All right. Uh, one more thing here. Public space. So let's just change the regex. That's close. But we need public space WPF that should get us there now we don't have those funky we we're about to screw everything up ah uh, just thanks vim you're the best you're the best editor all right let's go back to the vs code jank um we have all that in now <laughs> uh psych win was neat but i kind of like uh i kind of like wsl a lot better wsl's fast 
I love it. I, but when I'm in Windows, I kind of want to use Terminal with PowerShell. I don't know. I'm weird. I don't know why that is. So now we have this. We've got our parse in. We've got non-nullable values. All the non-nullables are figured out or nullable. We made a nullable. Whatever that error is, we've, we've been working all day on. All of this looks like it's nice and cleared up. No errors, no squiggly lines anywhere. We're looking, looking good. So now we would be pulling this in and setting it in our program CS. So how are we going to specify that from here now? If we look at our test JSON, or not test JSON, our program. So we've specified all this. Now this is where we make the magic happen. So I'm gonna just grab this guy, but we're gonna change things now. We're gonna go into my project. And I think at the very beginning, we can specify everything right here. We got that. File name we're gonna grab, tweaks is JSON. Oh, look at that weird indenting. Let's fix that up a little bit. That should be over a little bit. Okay. So now we have that root nut. We don't need this guy. We want to call specific things out of it. System D in spawn. No, I've actually been tinkering around with uh, OpenRC now. Actually replacing system D all together, but I haven't messed around with the inspawn. What is system D inspawn? Sometimes I get the best suggestions from chat, even though it does I'm like squirrel. System D inspawn. What do we got? Spawn a command or OS in a lightweight container. Okay. I can think of a couple of reasons why to do that. More powerful since it virtualizes the file system hierarchy as well as the process fee and IPC subsystems for the host and domain name. Oh, that's interesting. System inspawn may be used to boot full Linux-based operating systems in a container. That's probably what a lot of these, uh, was it vanilla OS or, uh, I can't remember, one of those distros that does a bunch of different package managers are probably utilizing and leveraging inspawn to do specifically that. It's cool. All right, we're done with old GPT. We're good here. We're pulling all this in. We're deserializing it. Now I want to grab a registry setting. Now I, I want to say we're going to have to do like a for loop or something of that nature. But oops, let's go shift copy that guy. I'm just going to use it as a template for up here. Okay, so looking at this, um, let's drop that mini map for now. We want to grab some of these values. So to start off, mm, registry manager, that's what we're going to grab. Let's write out some values through console. Eh, we don't need that one. Let's go tweaks. Let's go essential tweaks, AH, which would be, oh, what is that? Activity hub. Um, most people, I don't think I'm gonna mess around with that for the one shot. Hibernation, home group listener, tweaks location. Yeah, location is something we definitely need. So we'll grab this guy, dot registry, dot path in registry i believe if we parse it correctly it'd be something like root there registry zero and then we would parse in the tweaks path name copy so the path so that would be path of key then let's take this entire thing and kind of want to just spit it out just to probably three just to make sure so then then, then the actual key uh path name of key we'll just call this one name of key and that's gonna be the name 
and then probably value. We'll just pull in value as well. Name and value key. So we can go value, name. Let's see, beige commented, iterative statements for do while, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll do a, a for if, once we get this patched in, oh, we're so close. We're so close. Man, when I started this stream, I did not think we'd get nearly as much done as we have. Holy crap. I have learned so much in just such a little time. Between Twitch chat and AI, man, I swear I just grabbed like two weeks of worth of content you grab at like a college in just two hours. It's nuts how fast you can learn this stuff. Blows my mind. Anyways, let's do a run of this. Feel like we're ready. Now, if we did this correctly, uh, we'll be spitting out the name and path of the first value in registry. So the first value in tweaks location registry zero would be this. Oops. Ah, nope. It'd be this entire one. Now, if we did tweaks registry one, it would be this. It'd be sensor permissions. But since it's not, it's going to be constant. It should be con consent store location for the path value for the name and then value types deny where I don't know if this is going to work because value type in the parse, I want to say is not a string. Let's just run it and see what happens. Oh, we're so close. Dot net run. Ooh, okay. Line 12, line 20, 21, and then we also have line 51 in registry.cs. Did I screw something up in registry.cs? I shouldn't have touched that file. Dang it, I probably did something. What did I do? No. Dang it. What did I do? Registry does not contain a value. So this is something with probably public classes in the parse because there is now class registry and the parse I think has class schedule task class registry and that is public. So it's universal through the whole program. Uh, this is probably why earlier I think someone in chat said I should do private instead of public. Shit. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I can send that to you. Um, all right, you want the full tweaks.json, right? Uh, IX tweaks JSON. All right, there you go. You could just type the full name system.blah.registry. So the problem we're running into with the errors is actually because I think we made the classes public through the parse. You see how it says public class registry here? And then when we reference this, there is also this right here that's now referencing it. Which is a problem. Because registry doesn't have git value. And maybe I'm maybe I'm mis misinterpreting this whole thing. You can type a full name. Do you have two classes named registry? I think we do. So we have public class registry 11. We have public class registry. We have public class root. We have public class service, public class schedule task. Oh man. So I think these generic names are kicking my ass. Yeah. Rename it. Yeah, so this, this did not have any errors. Now it does because now it's referencing these new classes we set up in parse.cs. So the best way to fix that would be rename these classes in parse.cs or do we change the original file that was working to, to use something different? Just call for that, Julian. Do you, should we just do the original file? Don't touch the original. That was work. Just do parse.cs. Okay. Since that is new, I think it would be fine, right? So we just parse that. 
we'll just go registry. Ooh, can we make that cap sensitive? Let's make that cap sensitive. We don't want to name rename the variable, right? Because camel case and all that. Um, so registry and just rename that to my registry. Oh, variable's fine too? I feel like we should name it something different though, right? So we'll do camel case for this first one. As I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, with C-sharp, caps do matter. So you got camel case and all those stuff. So registry and registry, th this is a list where this is a class. So you can't just rename them the same thing. Maybe you can, but I don't think you should. Hmm. Yeah, this one did. Ah, shit. Okay. The weird thing is, like, this one... Like, I feel like we should isolate this out. So I really don't want to change the variables. I feel like just changing the classes to registry, my registry, and leaving the variables alone. Those variables, I think, are getting pulled in from the JSON, so I don't want to mess with them. Do a F2 on class name. Okay, I'm going to just do this. Let's try it. All right, we're going to just change that to my registry. Now, why is that not? The type namespace my registry could not be found. Are you missing a using directive? Okay, let's do F2, you said. Change class name to. Where the hell is the class name? Oh, my registry. Yes, 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 yes. I see what you guys are saying. Beautiful. Okay. So now that's done. <laughs> I'm such a noob. <laughs> All right. On the class at top. All right, we're good. So now it should run. .NET run. Okay. Got some unhandled exceptions here. Not out of the realm of possibility. Probably got some funkiness happening. Non-nullable values again, of course. Services in registry. That's actually, now that I know about non-nullable, this is actually prior to you guys, prior to today's coding. That's something separate. I need to go back and fix it. But now that I know what I'm doing in that regard, I'll be able to do that and fix those lines. Now this, as far as the unhandled exception for JSON, JSON value could not be converted to system.string path value tell registry dot value that is because cannot get value it's converting a number as a string or hmm, because that one json value was not so the issue here if we look at tweaks.json it's grabbing this this value right here is zero but you see how it says name value and value is deny value is usually zero but the type is string so we got to set up probably like a trap of some sort for that um i bet if we called the next one which is more standard with the d word i feel like censored permission state and this path would pull in just fine so instead of doing that let's just grab one and we can come back and troubleshoot that. I, I did that one on purpose just because I thought it would error out. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that they could not be converted to string for whatever reason. Let's try this one and see if it does go through. See if we get the same thing. Now we got the same thing. Okay, I got some other thing happening. All right. Never mind. Ah, I thought I was being smart for a second. Oh, that's a smart idea. I'd be okay inviting them to a Discord call for sure cannot be converted to string okay the problem is in the right line go to program.cs okay so the problem is in the right line right here is what was said i think the values cannot be converted to string what was the problem yeah the beauty of this is i know people like get dri driven crazy by uh the chat being up here but i kind of like it because i can't ignore chat when it's on my actual physical screen <laughs> That I kind of I think it adds something to the stream as you see everyone uh, chat back and forth. 
All right, Julian says it's line 13 where the problem is right here. JSON string. What would be the issue with that? Is it reading? There's got to be something in the file that could be problematic. Now, what could be problematic in the file is there are these really large invoke strings. Why we did this on the test JSON because they didn't have these weird things. This is the JSON that's in the open source project. I have mentioned that several times now, but I thought I'd just refresh people's memory. Now, obviously all these values should be able to be pulled in no problem, but there's a couple values that are gonna be problematic and they are towards the bottom. Like this huge invoke script. Is there a way we could omit the invoke scripts when we're reading the JSON value in project program.cs. So I would imagine trying to pull this giant thing into a value could totally bork everything up. So maybe omitting this would cut down our on some of the problems we'd have. But then there's also could be the whole converting to string error but i'm pretty sure the conversion to string is from that invoke script causing problems how how do how do omit that when doing the deserialize of the json oh it is okay okay try right line after reading the file into variable and check if it is read we could just you want me to just write the entire variable json string out i mean we could or just root really could just do a root yeah let's see the error let's see the error again so this is what we're getting right here the json value could not be converted to system.string registry value zero is still reading that registry value zero okay it is a convert string issue so what that is so if we look at the zero value right here oh shit where was that that was at the very beginning wasn't it uh tweaks location okay this is it so tweaks location registry value zero would be this right here and if we blow that up you'll see right here the value is the problem and if we look at the parsing when we go into red dot registry i want to say we got no it's being pulled in as a string everything's a string isn't it i don't see anything that's like an int ah never mind felt like i was on to something value could have to be a type object type object can hold everything in c i say the line in the it says the line in the error message and right here line 1564 byte position 18 which would be I don't know how valuable that is. Isn't that the line number from the actual variable that gets pulled in? Could be wrong. That's the JSON string variable, I believe. So if you look back here, I think it's, wouldn't it be line 15, whatever in JSON string or, or root really after it gets deserialized? De I mean, hmm. Yeah, error is when deserializing the JSON string. Read error from the bottom up, I think. Okay, let's read from the bottom up. So, all right. Yeah. So it is the JSON serialized, deserialize, the very bottom here. That's when the error happens, is during the deserialization. If, is that a word, deserialization? <laughs> I don't know. 1564 of the JSON file. Okay, Cass, let's, let's check out what is, what is 1564 of the file? What's the go-to command in VS Code so I don't annoy the shit out of everybody in chat? Is can you just go 1564? Shit. Control G. Control G. Ah, thank you. It's like I know there's a shortcut. There it is. 1564. Type D word. Well, that doesn't look wrong. That looks just like everything else. 
although the order of these values are is mixed up on this one i don't think that would matter right or does it yeah mixed up order is fine that's what i figured hmm was it zero value is zero value is zero let's scroll up a little bit see if we got value do you think that oh oh shnikes that's a big problem with the json value itself i see oh geez okay we'll see if that wrecks this other we need to fix it though so this should be something like that can we do like a um like a capture dot star capture uh regex that and then do a dollar sign one does that work or is vs code different oh i don't know oh uh for my wallpapers i'm using momentum tab never use replace that exclusively i don't think it's dollar sign zero Ah, oh, shit, let's just try it and see what happens. We'll do, uh, we'll just do a single replace. How's that? Hell yeah. Bam. Oh, snap. That was not what was intended. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, undo that. We do need to make sure. Ah. Quotes. Yes, um. Hmm. Let's go match that, uh, and then dollar say, yeah, then we remove that. Oh, uh, oh, no, no, all right, oops, all right, uh, dollar sign. So that would grab that section. Oh, no, I can't do that match. Darn it. All right, let's just go comma. Damn regex, I swear, it just fries my brain every time. Okay, value, dollar sign one, so close to getting this right. <laughs> but I need to exclude quotes. I would exclude quotes by doing a regex of that dot. Uh, instead of dot, let's go zero. Let's go zero to nine. Uh huh. Okay. Colon, comma. Then we add the dollar sign in with a question mark or a quote after. Now, yeah, yeah. Okay, that should work. Eureka! Done. I feel like that would have been easier in NeoVim, but whatever. All right. We're just gonna save that out. Now, let's see what happens. Ah, I'm sure it's fine. Ah, son of a biscuit eater. All right. Another deserialization error. No. 0x0d is invalid within a JSON string. Uh, now we're down to value line number 1844 during the... Ah, that darn invo script. I knew that damn invo script was going to screw things up. Just knew it. Of course, 844, 844 right here. Yeah, I just knew it. Ah, oh, all right. All right, how we get rid of these damn invoke scripts? I don't need them. I don't need them, but I, I can't really change them from this JSON. What do we do? No, 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 we can't remove the invoke script because this is still used by the open source toolbox, the win util. And we need to keep everything kind of the same. Uh, the values, I don't think, messed anything up. I think the toolbox will be just fine with that small change to the JSON. As I'm pretty sure that should have been there regardless. Because, yeah. It makes me think that part of the toolbox might not have been working right with that. But how do we omit invoke scripts? Escape them? Possibly. Uh, is that a UTF character? I have no idea what character that is. 
We could check. Character. Oh, it's a carriage return. <laughs> okay. It's a hex hex address for carriage return. Um what if parse maybe during the parse we could go through where is invoke script do can we just omit it during the parsing oh i don't think maybe like see we have these invoke scripts right here what if we just took the parse and omitted the public string list is that still going to screw everything up and deserialize there's got to be a way to just say skip that uh, no, I can't remove them because of the how the script works. Maybe we could replace them with a backslash rn. Mm. What do we got here on finish? Comment them out. What do you guys think? You think that would be that simple? Let's say we take this and we comment out the invoke scripts. I mean, that would be kind of cool. I mean, maybe. JSON ignore JSON property required over the invoke script. What was so Julian says this won't work. I feel like you guys are right. I don't feel like this will work at all. Both works. All right. I feel like the more elegant and y'all are smarter than me. So we're just going to go with shoot. We'll go with the first one. Um, how big is this? Okay, I was like, ha, ha, am I gonna be, am I better off just getting another regex going? Uh, we've been really, regex has been doing some power lifting for us today. All right, registry, registry, registry. There's another invoke script. Probably need to get rid of an undo script too. I didn't even see that. Registry, registry, registry. Invoke and undo. Bop, bop, bop. Invoke. Ah, see, I left some undos. All right, I feel like that's good. Script. Now oh, there's only 16 instances. Let's fly through, make sure we got them all. All right. All right, we're cooking with gas. Let's see if it will just skip the parsing of it with this. Let's try it. Worst case, we can try unpunished. I feel like unpunished one was much more elegant than this, but no. Uh, all right. 1844, 1844. That did not do anything to fix it. It's during the deserialization before it even hits these classes. All right, well, it's worth a shot. Oops. Uh, edit, redo. Right. Okay, so now, let's see. Ah, uh, good to hear, Rocket, man. I love Linux, man. Always fun learning something new. JSON ignore properties over the invoke script. Uh, let's see. How do we do that unpunished? That's the question. So during the G deserialization, we need to JSON ignore the property. Yeah, it's not during the mapping part. It's during the reading part through the deserialization. So, all right, let's, uh, let's ask AI, right? Let's see if it can get us something better during deserialization in C sharp JSON needs to ignore what do you what do you call that certain structures um ignore values no shit how do you how do you phrase that value or invoke script script variable oh my god this is terrible it's never gonna spit me out something good i'm gonna check that here in a second julian invoke script variable wait what json ignore public string oh interesting so you do that all right so json ignore json property require default invoke script where would that go? And Julian's, if we look at that, ooh, very cool. Very, very similar. You can see the first two lines change. 
The only thing that just changes down here. So I would say probably Julian wins this round. Annotation to the variable. So this would probably be the whole thing. Where would this go? So let's say we take this. Would we put that like right here? Yeah, absolutely not right there. You would go before each annotation during the parse.cs, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you guys wrote the same thing. So you're you're like, hey, take this, copy it, and then come to parse. Then we find script right here. And then what we do is just paste that right above it and then ignore that property. Except that doesn't work. We're missing a using directive. Uh, possibly the library also needs to be in here. Yeah. Well, yep, yep, yep. So let's grab that library. We don't have any libraries on here. So let's just, I think we'll just grab the serialization. I don't think we need serialization to be honest with you, but we'll just grab it just in case. Then when we look at the library down here, JSON property, JSON property, not an attribute class. Uh, you need JSON property structure. So, yeah. <laughs> quick fix using I don't want to use Newton soft JSON right there should be a system property there what did it say system.txt JSON dot JSON property I feel like that should be it so if we just do a, here let's just grab this guy dot property no that's not it JSON property? What was that? Ah, JSON property. Oops. Let's see if that works. No, that is not a valid library. Son of a biscuit. Hmm. Or just try only JSON ignore. I like that idea. Let's just do this. Do we really need this portion? No, I don't think we do. Uh, we did need that serialization. All right, fine. Just grab that serialization again. Now coming back. What kind of magic do we have? Did I fly right past it because it wasn't hit? Ah, I did. Okay. So we have that. So now just go script. JSON ignore. I know it's not in the right spot, but sue me. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's gonna bug me. Let's fix this. Script. Script. Alrighty. Bam. Script. I should regex this. Now, that JSON ignore, is it only the line before it or, or, or below it? Or does it, is it inclusive of other stuff in the script? So like doing doubles would uh, only blow it. Okay. Only the one line below it. I just had to ask because it kind of popped in my head. It's kind of a janky type implementation of doing this but not i don't hate it it's just i feel like there's a way more elegant way but at the end of the day if it works it works get rid of these scripts all right that looks very good so then we've gotten rid of those let's see what this looks like now so Honestly, we just want a different error message. Uh, right now it's line 1844 on the invoke script. Hopefully we get something different this time. Let's see. Nope. Still is parsing that son of a biscuit eater. Yeah. What would do that? How to omit it. Replace it in the string before we deserialize. Oh, I like that, Cass. I think that would be way better too. Yeah. So, I like it. So right here, we pull in all the text from JSON string. Before we deserialize the JSON string, we need to pull out all those invoke scripts. Mm, best way to do that would be remove 
Okay. Okay. This is about to get interesting. Remove JSON variables. Ah, JSON structs before deserialization in. Oh man, how do I say this? I am. C sharp. Remove JSON structs in the. I'm trying to think of how a machine would want to be told this. Remove JSON structs in the JSON variable before it just, ah, let's try it. I think that's pretty close actually. Obviously Newton soft JSON link. Yeah. I think it's a multi-string error. Like you said, unpunished or right, Julian might've come up with something. Oh, that's a smart way of doing it. JSON dot replace and then just replace the whole variable. Oh, okay. And it's zero to X zero D. We'll, we'll come back and paste that. I like it. So uh, this would be JSON string, JSON string. Uh, oh, not dot. Come on. All right, replace. And then we grab the actual character that it's not liking right here uh-huh uh-huh oh i like that i think you might have got that i think it doesn't matter if it empties it out uh i think i think we're still okay well, let's see what that does uh still still reading that but i might not be specifying the right thing because i think that's a hex id and to specify, I think it's just a carriage return. Yeah, it fails. Then backslash R is what should be in the string. So can we just do like a backslash R? Escape it out like that? Oh, okay. So he didn't mess up on that. So let's try escaping dot X zero D. Oh, not X. Ah, my bad. Let me get the exact variable here. This. It's a special character. I am not doing it. So escaping that. And then if this doesn't work, we can go back and try with uh, escaping, uh, doing the backslash R for a carriage return. That might work. Oh, oh. Now we got a new error. Dot X zero A. Again, 1844, which is the invoke script. Mm. Like it. All right, copy. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Oh, yes. You all rock. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Yes. Oh, that is just beautiful. Damn. How about them apples? That is awesome. So now we're completely reading the official script, the JSON tweak script in here. Did it spit out the values we wanted? Path of key, path of key, value of key. Oh gosh, that is amazing. Let's go. That's where we're going to end it today. That was just, oh. You just can't get any better than that. Good night. Just gorgeous. I'm so happy. Thank you, guys. An amazing stream. Just absolutely amazing. That is the best conclusion. I honestly thought we could see at least 50 more errors. <laughs> yes. Julian, unpunished. Y'all are amazing. Thank you, guys. Ah, uh, Thursday. I think we're getting close. We're getting close. Now it's just pulling in those values and spitting out to those functions we've already written to make all this happen according to our tweaks.json. And then when we have the executable at the end of the day, we can just 
throw that JSON file in from the official one, and it's done. So, awesome, guys. All right, y'all. Have a great evening, and I will see you all on Thursday. We're finishing this guy. I mean, maybe a week? Maybe two weeks? I don't know. I mean, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like the end of the week we're going to have something. All right. Later, y'all.